overwhelming majority, close to 90% of Canadians have done exactly that. The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views. Uh, remarkable things that I experienced in Ottawa were understanding the extent of how far the legacy media is willing to stretch the truth and even look the opposite way and film something completely different and tell a completely different narrative. I just spoke to Jeremy. He is doing a documentary uh, about the convoy from Alberta to Ottawa and once it was in Ottawa and what led up to the convoy and everything until the convoy left. So check out this interview and to see more about the convoy, check out convoyreports.com. Hi, Jeremy. So you, you went through the, well, not the entire convoy, but from Calgary to Ottawa and then spent, I guess, most of the time or all of the time in Ottawa documenting the Ottawa, uh, you know, the trucker convoy and all, everything around it. So tell me what you saw, what is like your biggest highlights of it, and what you have been doing since. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we were there the entire time uh, in Ottawa, right from landing into Ottawa with the trucks, uh, all the way through to the Emergency Act. We were there with cameras filming everything. Um, so we got some incredible footage, uh, lots of behind the scenes footage. A lot of people don't know entirely what was going on, but we were able to capture that content. Um, the most remarkable things that I experienced in Ottawa were understanding the extent of how far the legacy media is willing to stretch the truth and even look the opposite way and film something completely different and tell a completely different narrative. Swastikas and Nazi flags were seen at the Freedom Convoy protest in Ottawa over the weekend. I spoke to one hate crime researcher Monday who says politicians at the local level need to do more to prevent these symbols of hate from being shown at protests. Uh, you know, given Canada's support of Ukraine, in this current crisis with Russia, it, I don't know if it's far-fetched to ask, but, but there is concern that Russian actors could be continuing to fuel things uh, as, this, as this protest grows, but perhaps even instigating it from, from the outset. So we feel like it's our responsibility to bring the truth and chronicle the events of what happened uh, at the Freedom Convoy, what led up to the Freedom Convoy, what's going on post-Freedom Convoy, uh, to the public's attention. So we're doing this this documentary. Actually, it's a, a mini-series to start so that we can get this out right away. First one airing on uh, May 1st on our website, www.truckingforfreedom.com. Um, and then for every 45 days after that, we'll be releasing a next episode and we'll have a collection of all of them in one consistent documentary at the end of the year. What we're trying to do with this documentary is express the truth first and foremost to Canadians and then the world. Um, Canadians, because the reality is that in in the United States, in Germany, in Australia, those places were covering the convoy right off the bat. Canada was not covering the convoy. We feel like there's a, an incredible disconnect between what actually happened and what the public was told. Um, so we feel responsible to be able to tell the story. And what brings you to the Bitcoin conference? Has the trucker convoy taught you anything about it? Your shirt has a truck that is a Bitcoin, a Bitcoin truck. Yeah, so when we were in Ottawa, we thought about fundraising a typical way that you would fundraise for a project like this. Uh, two things kept us from that. Uh, the first would be for fear of having our accounts shut down uh, because that actually was happening in, at incredible rates in Ottawa. Financial service providers have already taken action based on that information. The emergency measures we put in place are being used, they are having an impact, and they will have a growing impact in the days to come. So we've realized that 
the fiat world has been interesting and, and around this freedom uh, mentality, it's getting scary how well the banks are willing to work with government in controlling that. Um, so we're actually experimenting with uh, cryptocurrency uh, and, and funding this project through cryptocurrency. Uh, we were invited down by Mike Germano, who's the publisher of Bitcoin Magazine. Uh, he said this would be a great place for us to connect with like-minded people, um, freedom-thinking people, freedom-money-thinking people. Uh, so that's what we're doing down here, is, is just trying to do some networking, figure out this world, this freedom money world, um, and if not through funding, through influence, uh, communicate what happened in Ottawa with these type of people because these are the kind of people that are hungry for truth. I'd like to give a big kudos to Rebel News. There weren't a whole lot of news stations covering the Freedom Convoy, uh, and Rebel was there every step of the way, so a huge thanks, actually. Uh, uh, our gentleman here is wearing a fringe minority shirt, and that's all a resultant of the Freedom Convoy. So it's, uh, I just want to say thank you for, for being there for Canada, for being there for truth, and continuing to tell the truth. If you like the shirt I'm wearing, fringe minority, check out rebelnewsstore.com, where you can buy this shirt and many other shirts. Please check out rebelnewsstore.com for the best merch.